Hey there, everyone. This is Peter Bury from the Joomla Beat podcast and also from joomtraining.com.au. This is a particular video for joomtraining.com.au, part of the T3 training course where you get actually get to see me build a template in the T3 framework. Now, I've just recorded an hour-long one and realized that my microphone wasn't working, so I'm doing this again. It's really, really annoying. Ah. Uh, Okay, all right, let's, let's just get to it. So what I just previously did and I might just talk about was uh, build a templating, building a template for a particular client here. Now I've got the template here, it's a JPEG. So I don't have much to work on, uh, unfortunately. I, I can't pull out the font sizes or anything, but uh, you could, this happens sometimes and you can see how this is all pieced together using the T3 framework for Joomla. Now I'm just going to test this audio. Okay, and it looks like we're good to go this time. Right. So I've just built this top one up here, this uh, block across the top. Uh, I've, I did some bad practices in this and uh, let's let's try and avoid this for the rest of this particular build. Uh, let, I'll go through what I've got here at the moment. I have the T3 blank template which I'm working off. I have customized a couple of template blocks here. So I've created one called MHA Home. And that was just a duplicate of, I think, the default one. And I also have a whole bunch of blocks here, specifically with the prefix MHA. Now I do that so that when I upgrade my, my templates, uh, it doesn't get overridden. Now the, the later versions of T3 have a local file as well where you can store all your files. So it avoids any of this overriding and you can freely update your templates as well. So, But that, that that's for another video. Don't worry about that for now. So I've created some prefixes here. They just create uh, have some custom, custom code in here. So I'm just gonna open up this one here, which I just did earlier. And this is just a spotlight block. So let me just explain the code a little bit here. We have the check spotlight, which is a unique name for the spotlight position. It's called MHA BFG. And I call it BFG because it's be informed, find support, and get involved. So BFG makes sense. And we have some meaningful module name positions here from be informed, find support, get involved, and they're all in there. Uh, I've got a a class here which is very specific to what we're working with MHA BFG so that when I'm doing my CSS or well, my less I should be uh, more accurate with the naming MHA BFG anything under there will fall into that that uh, terminology uh, those classes terminology it's getting late okay let's do this next particular module block and this is a bit of descriptor text down here and it's in orange and it's big and it looks kind of nice. I have no idea what the font is, which is a little bit unfortunate. So let's uh, start building that in. Let's see if we have a module block for already. So MHA home, let's see what's in here. MHA role, okay, I'm gonna call this tagline. I don't like this word role that was written before. So I'm gonna go tagline, save. I have uh, PHP Storm here, which is the editor that I'm using, PHP Storm, and it's auto uploading to my FTP server. Usually I work on a local host, not on an FTP server, and if I see any of our staff doing this, I, I, I slap them on the wrist, but since I'm the boss, it's okay. I'm allowed to do this. I'm allowed to cheat every once in a while. Uh, this is all uploading to a staging server, so it's, it's okay. So I've got the MHA tagline and that will load in a block. Now, if I just refresh on the home page, it's going to throw me an error here because that block doesn't exist yet. It should be right here. There it is. MHA tagline not found. Great, that's because we have to create it. Now it was called roll before. So I'm just double clicking that. Let's have a look here. So this is just loading up a standard uh, JDoc include module, so it's creating this uh, module position and it's in raw. The styling is raw. Uh, I'm going to change this around now and just call it what I just renamed it to. So tagline, copy, yeah, go away, MHA role. Let's change that to tagline as well. This is the class suffix for it. So I'm changing it to tagline. 
j.include type modules. Yep, name of it is not MHA role, it is MHA tagline. Now um, we can choose between the different types of styles. This is a type of output that Joomla will produce for this particular co um, code block. Uh, we'll keep it raw because it's just one bit of text. So I think raw is okay for it in this situation. I'll go save, auto uploading. Oh, so what I'm uploading is role. I need to rename this. File save as dash. Da, 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 da. Okay. And there it is. So did that auto upload? Yes. Good auto uploading. Save. Refresh on the home page, and that should work. That should disappear. Cool. Great. So now I need to create a module. Get out of this. Extensions, module manager. I have a whole bunch of modules here already. I'm using the really, really cool Advanced Module Manager by Peter Van Westen, uh, creator at nonumber.nl. These are awesome extensions which make managing Joomla just a little bit easier. So now I can, it, you can color code things. Uh, I like color coding them so I can visually see uh, grouped together modules. Especially when I'm not calling this like a call to action one, call to action two, call to action three. Having the color indicator makes it a little bit nicer. And like I said a little bit earlier, I don't actually, I don't know if I said a little bit earlier uh, because it might have been in my video before, which I worked an hour on and realized there's no audio. Probably a good thing. I talk too much. But here I have meaningful module position names. Be informed, find support, get involved. So when we're working with the code, we know what we're dealing with. We know which positions they are rather than position one, position two, position three, like this one. Got no idea where position one is. But if you look on the site in the design, the be involved, be informed one is there. Great. Makes sense. And they're all yellow, so they're all grouped together in a yellow spot. Cool. What was I doing? That's right, all right. New new custom HTML block with the tagline. So custom HTML. Loading, loading, tagline. I won't show you the title. Now position is MHA tagline. Now that doesn't exist in here because it's a custom module position. So you won't find it. That's that's a tricky bit. But no, that's not it. You can just type in whatever you want. MHA tagline, enter. There we go. So that will match up with this one here, MHA tagline. Right, back to custom HTML output. I guess I should, uh, wish I had the PSD. I could just copy and paste this in right now. We play a vital role in development of mental health. I'll just write that now. We play a vital role, what was it? In the development of mental, mental health. We play a vital role in the development of mental health initiatives. Initiatives, which, what was it? Which result in, which result in increased community awareness. Community. Where this uh, and in increased knowledge and in increased knowledge of mental health issues. Cool. Right. That should be it. That's all I should need. Just checking some of these other things here. Module styles. This is that raw bit that I added in to the module position before. Raw. So inherited will make it raw. But I can override the actual styling here as well. So I can make it rounded, outlined, X, HTML, horizontal, table, etc, etc. So raw is none, I think it is. Just go save and close. And refresh. And that should appear as a line of text. Very exciting. 
All right, let's pretty this up. Let's pretty it up and put some styling around there so it has to be orange. I've already hexed valued the orange before. I should really make variables out of this so I'm not redoing this again and again. And let's do some styling around this. So I'm going back to my template.less file under my theme. So I've created a custom theme called MHA template.less. Here we go. And I'll add in my next bit of CSS styling. Now I'll just paste that there for, for now. Copy a comment block. Now I like to make sure all my comments are in here so I can easily find and search and understand and uh, semi-document what I'm actually doing in this site, uh, in, the, in the less file, especially when it gets really big and unwieldy and I can't see what I'm actually doing. So I'll just go there and I'll call this tagline styling on the homepage. Beautiful. Now, did I have some custom, where is it? Yep, MHA tagline, custom class, so I can actually do my markup in this. Dot net, bracket, bracket, color, hash, and it's this one here that I want, cut, great. Now the padding on this needs to be added in as well. So I've got padding top and padding bottom. Uh, now there's a, a variable for this in T3, which I can never remember off the top of my head, but there's a default uh, padding variable, which I should really use. Now, where is it? Variables. Now, if you haven't seen this before, this is all the predefined variables that T3 has. And you should be using in, a, in your site. You, you should be opening up this variables document and 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 defining all of your colors uh, before doing anything else. Your your colors, your your padding sizes, and somewhere in here I've got padding. I've got line height. Where are, where are we? You'd find this base base font size. There we go. Padding. No no. Border radius. Let's find it. Got line height. There it is, baseline height. That's what I want to use. So my padding will be in comparison to the baseline height. So I'll go back to my MHA.less padding baseline height. Zero. No padding on the sides, just padding on the top and the bottom. Save. Great, let's see how this looks. Uh, back to the home. Now, I, I, let's see, I've changed the color, I've done the padding, I should really change the font size as well. So, font size before I test this. Font size, let's go back to my variables. I should have a base font size here. Base font size. So, uh, the really cool thing about these variables is I can do mathematical calculations against them. So I can go back to here, base font size times 2. So that would be what, 28 pixels? That's, that's looking alright, let's do this. Cool, line height is terrible, I need to center this and make the width of this a lot narrower as well. It's uh, going way too wide. So let's see, line height, dash height. Uh, it should be baseline height. Times 1.5. Should make it a little bit better. Text align, should be center. waiting for it to upload before I test this. Great. Cool, that looks neat. And now I need to make that whole containing area a little bit narrower. So what do we have here? Let's have a look at the tagline. 
Okay, so this is this isn't quite done right. This this should be in a container and in a row, etc., etc. So let's have a look at the default output because I can never remember this. Let's uh, it's a footer one, footer. So it should be in a wrapper, then container, and then a row. So container and then row. Now this is uh, just the default way. Bootstrap organizes its structure. So a container will make it a particular width, such as the uh, 1140 width on the widescreen, 960 or 940 on a narrow one, and the tablet size and the, the mobile size. So they're the snap points, and that's what the container does. The row means that this is a horizontal row of elements, so that there will be uh, the left margin taken away, so it'll be a negative left margin, so everything lines up nicely to the left-hand side. So that's why you have the row, and I'll show you what happens. So I'm going to do the grab the container, MHA tagline, and this spotlight bit of code shouldn't be here. Container. Let's close that div. And my code looks terrible now. Can't have that. There's tools. I can never remember this. Uh, where is it? Did it? Code. Auto indent lines. What's that? Command shift I. There we go. How pretty does that look? Doesn't really doesn't like that JDoc one. It's annoying. Let's save that. Now I do need to put a row in here as well, but uh, you'll see how this looks now. The container should bring it in line with this margin here. So this news and elements is within a container. The logo is within a container, so that text should pop in. Refreshing, let's have a look. There we go, it's popping in already, fantastic. Uh, it doesn't look too bad. I don't think I need to put a row element because I don't have multiple columns in this. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Actually, I'm just going to modify the code quickly on the fly here and see what difference it makes. So see if I actually need to do it or not. So I've got tagline there, container. Let's edit the HTML. Before that custom, I go div class equals row. And I'll go down before my closing div. So that's should be around here, close the div, and cool. Whoops. Yeah, not quite aligned right. Let, let's have a look at that row. Yeah, so see the row shifted it to the left because it thinks it needs to be aligned up correctly. So I'm just going to take that row off, and you'll see that, that blue highlighted area uh, shift back to the right. So that one, row, off. There we go, shift it back to the right. That's how I want it. So uh, let's leave it at that without the row. Did it right the first time. Always good to check though. Now I want to make this a little bit narrower too. It's way too, what's the word, wide. And I think I need more margin at the top and bottom. So let's play around with this a little bit. So I've got another class down here I can play with and it's custom. So let's have a look here. I'll go custom. Let's do this element styling width is, let's say, 70%. Why well, if this is a margin on the side? Okay, let's play with this. Back to my templates.less and back to my tagline area. So tagline, let's go in here, dot custom bracket, and I will go with typing's terrible tonight, 70%, and I'll have to put margins on this, I'll margin zero and, whoops, zero and auto, so that will center itself in the middle. Uh, that looks good. Now my padding at the top wasn't right. 20 pixels was nowhere near enough, so I'm going to times this by 3. Times that by 3, padding at the top. Great, great, great. Uh, that should be it. Saving. Yep, finished. Refresh. 
refresh much better now I just have to work out what font that is and work out if the sizing is right or not so it, it's coming together slowly we've got this bit here we've got to do the font again that's okay so let's start moving down to the next bits down here this one two three these multiple positions this is a k2 uh, k2 content module block pulling in articles from the news and events category this one here probably another custom h1 block and another custom h1 block but i'll save this for the next video in the sequence so uh, please subscribe to the youtube channel and uh, follow the next videos if you want to keep learning thanks bye